What was the most dickish way in which a friend showed you that you're not as close as you thought? Part 2. Kick back and enjoy the ride if you dig what you see. Hit that subscribe button and share the love for Thread Tonic. Account 1. Not me, but two of my best friends. One friend we'll call Alan borrowed my other friend Kenneth's car for a family emergency on two occasions. It turns out those family emergencies consisted of Alan driving six hours to cheat on Kenneth by hooking up with Kenneth's girlfriend at another college. Account 2. Raped my dog. Edit, downvote me all you want, but it's true. I asked him to take care of my dog for a week while I was abroad. When I came back, he told me my dog wasn't feeling well and had bloody stools and wasn't eating. I took my dog to the vet, who found severe tears around the rectum. I had no proof, but at the very least, he inserted something. I stopped talking to him and told no one until last May when I got drunk and shared the story. Now everyone knows, and his roommate came forward saying he found bestiality on his computer. R.I.P. Cash. Fucking car took his life. P.S. Cash is the name of my dog. Account 3. My childhood best friend has been telling everyone that I raped her out of the blue. For 12 years, she's been spreading this false story around our hometown. Edit. This didn't actually happen to me. It happened to another Redditor. Thanks for the karma. Hopefully, she'll stop messaging me. Account 4. I'm going to sound half my age for a few paragraphs, but like you, jabberwocky, I need it out of my system. It really isn't a big deal in the scheme of things, and I know bitches will be bitches. I'm in a sorority, not a social sorority, but we do have mandatory social events. I like planning stuff with the girls outside these events because mandatory hangout time isn't as fun as optional hangout time. Generally, my events were successful, and it became a tradition to go to a local coffee place and play board games and gossip. One day, no one showed up. I texted a few girls and found out that my bestie had planned an outing at her apartment without inviting me. When I went over, I walked in on her talking about how full of myself I am and how she can't believe people fall for how fake I am. It felt like a scene from a movie. Nothing that Trees and a few Danny Boyle movies couldn't fix, but I felt really shitty and questioned a lot of friendships that night. TLDR, Sorostitute bestie didn't invite me to girl time, so I got high and watched Sunshine. Bitches suck. Account 5. I was best friends with a guy throughout middle and high school. We did everything together, from theater to speech and debate. And I always gave him rides. If I had to choose one person to stay in touch with from high school, it would have been him. A few weeks into freshman year of college, I noticed he unfriended me on Facebook. After texting, messaging, and calling, he finally texted back, saying, I don't want to be friends anymore. I replied, I don't understand. But if that's what you want, fine. We barely spoke since. At high school speech and debate competitions, we only exchanged brief greetings. He spread rumors that I overreacted, claiming he tried to convince me it was a joke. I lost friends over this. It has been two years and people still bring it up, upsetting me each time. TLDR, don't befriend douche nuggets. Account 6. I had a miscarriage at six months. It was his child. He didn't visit me at the hospital, but let me stay in his room for two days to cope. He never talked about it and kicked me out after two days because it was too much like we were dating. I try not to speak with him often. Edit. He didn't come to my hospital room at my request so that he wouldn't have to look at our dead son. I don't think he was prepared for something like that. Account 7. I was sent abroad for a job I hated. I confided in a friend from university who convinced me to quit and move back to my home country to live in his town. He emphasized how cool it would be to party together again. One of my fears was having difficulties establishing a new social circle in a town where I only knew him. He assured me he'd introduce me to his circle. After weeks of debating, I quit the job and moved. I've lived in the new city for over a year and have seen him twice once to help him pick out a present for his new girlfriend and once to loan him my DSLR camera, which he returned without the SD card. He never invited me to hang out with his friends. Account 8. I know I'm going to sound whiny, but it really did hurt. I was a junior in university. The two years prior were very depressing. I sucked at being a freshman and did not go out at all. I was so socially inept that I didn't talk to anyone, and so on. 
Fast forward to junior year, I became very anxious and stressed. I failed all of my classes and withdrew from school. In my mind, it was the end. I did not know what to do. I've never felt so aimless. I came home and talked to the one person I still kept in touch with from high school. I told him how I felt at university and that it just wasn't working out. That I might continue at a state university, but I am not sure at all. He listened, and I thought it was going all right. He was the only person I told. A few weeks later, I talked to a mutual friend of ours who I shared a community college class with. I took GE classes at CC in the interim. She asked me about my situation, and I confessed and told her. I asked her how she knew. Well, my friend called to confirm to mutual friends it was on speaker, according to her, that I dropped out of university and am now in community college. She told me that they were laughing the entire time. I've never felt such a violation of trust. He was the only person apart from my parents that I looked to for support. Instead, he embarrassed me. Up to that point, I considered him my best friend. TLDR. I dropped out of university, looked to my best friend for support, and he followed by breaking our confidence and revealing this to mutual friends. I felt embarrassed and worthless. Till. If you're going to look for support, especially for depression or personality disorders, look to a parent and or a medical professional only. Right now, I am doing pretty well in my community college classes, hoping it will help the readmission process to my former university to complete my degree in civil engineering. I'm starting an internship next week at a city engineering department as well. I am grateful that things are finally working out. I feel great. TLDR 2. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. Account 9. I had been friends with this guy since the second grade, and our families were pretty close. We are 23 now, and I hate his guts. A few years ago, he got a girlfriend and proceeded to cut off all communication with his friends. He ignored calls and texts for months. I finally just gave up on him, thinking that the girlfriend wanted him all to herself. It turns out she wanted him to hang out with all of his other friends, but he just ignored us. A few months later, my mom got sick and they told us she had a 50-50 chance of surviving. I called, texted, and emailed him, really needing my friend at the time. He told me he needed to work in the morning. It was 7 p.m. and he worked at 10 a.m. and couldn't hang out with me. In my moment of need, when I needed him the most, he chose to sleep instead. Fuck him! Account 10. One of my closest friends likes to drink and occasionally reaches his dark place. He struggles with depression and claims his outbursts are from his own self-loathing. Outbursts are him saying things to deliberately hurt me regarding my personality, past relationships, current friendships, etc. I have pretty thick skin, but he is remarkably intelligent and insightful and can cause the metaphorical stab to the heart in a sentence. An example would be, how's X? Where X was a very close friend I admitted feelings for and haven't spoken to since. TLDR, friend highlights my biggest insecurities when drunk. Account 11. My best friend growing up died in a horrible car accident five years ago. The day of the accident, she was supposed to ride with me. Instead, she chose to drive on her own. I felt fucking guilty as fuck for five goddamn years. I've accepted that it wasn't my fault and that she was a horrible driver. There's still the what ifs. There were days where I wished I had traded places with her or done something different to change what happened. I spent five years feeling so bad about everything that had happened and missed the fuck out of her. It really messed me up. I'm never going to get a friend like that ever again, and it really sucks. Then recently, someone told me about her super secret blog entries and gave me the password and said to read it. Apparently, she'd had me filtered out for the bad stuff. I was able to read everything else before using my username. Most of it was her shit-talking me and saying how much I suck and that she had no best friends. It was really hurtful to read, and I'm trying to wrap my mind around it. Should I be pissed at my dead friend or just leave it be? I don't know. ETA, it really surprised me. I had no idea. What set her off was that she thought that I'd lied about being sexually assaulted at a party to get attention. Which is not true. I had naturally told her and my boyfriend at the time. Don't see how that's an attention grab. Yet she never mentioned this to me. Instead, there's a blog post with her trying to get people to rally against me. Ouch. Also, I've been drinking and am forgetting the important shit. Sorry for the edits. Account 12. Hawked my camcorder for drugs.
I used to hang out with a bad crowd. However, I was good friends with a couple of them. About a month after I met them, I realized one of them, Jamie, was my best friend from my childhood. It took me so long to realize it because I was five when he moved. Everything was good, just the usual stupid teenage shit. Well, my mom didn't like the crowd I hung out with and actually filed a court order to keep me away from them. About two weeks after this happened, I finally convinced my mom to let me go over to Jamie's house to get back some of my stuff that I had over there. Most of the stuff was CDs, a couple of things of clothes, and a camcorder. The story behind that was my mom got me into a film school thing during the previous summer and had been so impressed with my work that my parents pulled together their practically non-existent money to buy me a camcorder. Well, Jamie wouldn't answer his door or his phone, so I went to another friend's house to see if I could figure out where my stuff was. Sure enough, he had told me that he pawned it off for 40, it was bought for 400, and spent it all on pot. They had been pretty good friends to me until they pulled that shit. I was fucking crushed about it because my parents worked so hard to get that for me, and my friends sold it off. No pawn shop I checked at had it, and Jamie refused to talk to me because he knew I would have beaten the shit out of him, so I had to let it go. Account 13. The first day of sixth grade, I met Chris. We slowly grew to be great friends in school. And finally, toward the end of the year, we started hanging out outside of school. And when the year ended, we even hung out a bunch of times over the summer. I even went to the water park with his family once. Then the first day of seventh grade, I finally saw him at lunch, and he was sitting at the popular rich kids table. I remember walking up to him all eager and saying hi, and he basically made fun of me and told everyone how poor I was to make his new friends laugh. I never felt so hurt, and we quickly became enemies. It's okay, though, because in high school, his dad took a job offer in Burlington, and he had to move to rural Vermont. Karma's a bitch! Account 14 when my parents got divorced in the mid-80s, it was still very unusual in my country. Especially since my mother demanded the divorce after my scumbag dad had been cheating. My mom used to be socially very active and always had excellent dinner parties that were famous in our small town. My mom is the kind that will fight for what is hers. But she's not someone to badmouth people or to bicker if someone bitches about her. And of course, she's old school and was still shocked that the love of her life treated her so badly, so the time of the divorce was a huge hit to her self-esteem. Especially when my dad went around and slowly but surely made sure that he destroyed anything that made her happy, even though he wasn't living in the city, but about an hour away. First, my mom was asked to leave the golf club that she had been a member of for 10 years and had been going to every single day, then the tennis club, and then she wasn't invited anymore to dinner parties. The reasoning she was given? So there wouldn't be any drama when my dad went there with his new girlfriend. Oddly enough, my dad never went to the golf club or tennis club and was just a member to be able to say so. Also, he considered the townspeople as small-minded and stupid and rather hung out with the city people. After my dad was finished bad-mouthing my mother, all my mother's girlfriends looked down on her. Nobody would talk to her on market days or in the shops. I vividly remember groups of women chatting excitedly whenever we walked past them. My mom, however, is a fighter, and she ignored the snobs and made new friends who were outsiders, too. Mainly Arab women and other non-European women. Of course, that was reason for more talk because that was even more unconventional than a divorce. Through her new friendships, she learned to speak fluent Italian, basic Arabic, and learned to cook exotic Middle Eastern and Indian dishes like a pro. That was all before the fusion cooking hype on TV, and really opened her mind to new cultures. Roughly 30 years later, many other women that snobbed her got divorced, mainly because their husbands left them after the kids were old enough. And they all went straight to my mom for advice. Instead of snubbing them, she took them in with her arms wide open, consulted them in their grief, and helped them out to fight for a financial settlement as well as she could. Not once did she point fingers. On my mom's birthday last year, I overheard a former snob woman say that she truly envies my mom for having had the guts to demand an early divorce from her asshole husband. She herself would still wait every night with the fist under her apron for her asshole husband to finally eat worms so she could be financially independent and start living a life. 
TLDR, during my parents' divorce, my mom got dropped by all of her friends. She made new and better friends, and later the ones that dropped her came back for advice when they got divorced. Account 15. My then best friend stopped talking to me out of nowhere because I started going through some hard times in my life. Bankruptcy, my daughter and I were both very sick. My husband got laid off. She stopped returning my calls and texts and wouldn't even respond to me on Facebook because she was hanging out with her boyfriend and she didn't want to hear depressing things. TLDR. When I needed a friend the most, she decided her boyfriend was more important. <laughs>